Well, we were here in Europe, and Europe used to be a leader in the world of mobile. It was a leader 20 years ago when mobile was introduced and GSM. Uh, but it's not the case anymore. And uh, the GSMA has just recently uh, published a report, a uh, Navigon GSMA report, comparing wireless performance in the US uh, and in Europe. Uh, and it's a sad story. Uh, uh, just three numbers or, or three um, uh, stats from this. Uh, first of all, investment uh, in wireless infrastructure uh, has increased by 75% uh, in the US in the past five years, and it's decreased in Europe. Uh, second, in terms of 4G or LTE connections, uh, in the US uh, this year, by the end of this year, 20% of the connections will be uh, LTE. In Europe, 2%, uh, so not really that good. And in terms of speed, as, as a natural consequence, uh, connections in the US are 75% uh, uh, faster than in Europe and will be 100% faster uh, in the next five years. So not, not a pretty picture for Europe. I think the reason for, for this gap, this widening gap that we're, that we're seeing, uh, is that the market structures are very different. Uh, uh, economies of scale in the US and fragmentation in Europe. Uh, just AT&T and Verizon, two uh, uh, carriers in the US, are each larger than the three largest uh, European operators combined. Uh, and in Europe, um, EU 28 now, uh, uh, since recently, we have more than 100 uh, mobile network operators and more than 600 MVNOs. I mean, completely different things in terms of economies of scale. Uh, I think the rules to allocate spectrum, spectrum policy, are widely different as well. Uh, and clearly in the US, uh, they uh, favor uh, uh, harmonization and release of spectrum in line with network investment. In Europe, it's more complicated, uh, I must say. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think the third thing is that the whole uh, regulatory framework in the US incensed investment and innovation and looks at this as a very dynamic market where there is innovation and, uh, and investment. Whereas Europe has been focusing rightly, but I think way too much uh, on a static interpretation of the market, looking at, looking at really lowering consumer prices. Well, first of all, I think it's a good idea and it's a great idea to think about the single digital market uh, and, and we welcome that. Uh, we're all looking at jobs and innovation and, and I think that's very good. Um, the second thing is um, telecoms and mobile and ICT are really an enabler uh, for economic growth uh, and for a diversity of sectors, um, healthcare, financial services, transportation, etc. So uh, for um, uh, the mobile and telecoms industry to contribute to the digital single market, this needs to be a positive reform for the industry and, and positive overall and, and we very much hope it will be the case. Uh, and the third thing is really I think Europe is lagging behind uh, in terms of uh, investment uh, in wireless and, and uh, telecoms infrastructure. So the single digital market needs to inset investment and inset innovation, which uh, Europe really needs. I think the reform that we're uh, contemplating, discussing for Europe uh, needs to do a number of things and, and very briefly I'll mention four uh, and then I'll talk about what the private sector has to do of course. Um, I, I think the um, regulatory reform first and foremost needs to look at spectrum. Uh, spectrum needs to be allocated to the industry in a harmonized way. Uh, the GSMA just published a report showing the uh, important contribution that mobile makes today to the economy in, uh, in Europe and, and the increased contribution it can make tomorrow if the right amounts of spectrum are released. So spectrum, very big. Uh, the second thing is I think the regulatory framework needs to be uh, really pushing towards facilitating, enabling, supporting investment. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, the third thing, uh, I think it needs to be consistent. It needs to be consistent across the 28 uh, European member states. Uh, uh, that, that's the first level. And it needs to be consistent um, for all service providers. So if you're providing a service, whether or not you're a regulated incumbent telco player or an innovative internet company, you should uh, have the same regulatory framework. Um, and the fourth area uh, is um, I think we need to have um, uh, a policy and a regulatory framework that 
enables consolidation. I, I've said that in the US and Europe, we have very different economies of scale versus fragmentation. Uh, I think we need to look at um, the regulatory uh, framework from the perspective of a dynamic, uh, uh, innovative market that needs to invest versus a short term only look at price impact in the next couple of months. So consolidation should be enabled. Uh, th those are the four things I think from a regulatory perspective, spectrum, uh, incenting in investment, um, uh, consistent rules uh, and enabling consolidation, that's for regulation. Now, I think the private sector uh, needs to do a lot to uh, make uh, Europe uh, and the European market uh, a stronger place. Uh, and, and mobile network operators are very keen to do that. Uh, they will do this um, uh, either uh, despite difficult, a difficult regulatory environment, which uh, would be a shame, or they will be, do that uh, by being helped uh, with uh, the regulatory environment. And I very much hope this would be the case. I think it's a fantastic event, GSR. We, we, the GSMA, have been working with the ITU over the years uh, to support uh, this forum. Uh, we're very happy to see that it's very successful this year. It, it's so important to share best practices, new development uh, in, in the sector, uh, and you can do that by sharing information uh, across countries, but also by looking at the new things and the new technological developments, ideas, etc. So we, we very much at the GSMA support that and look forward to continuing to work with the ITU on, on the GSR.